Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good whatevers. Today we'll be learning a little bit about the Roman legions. We'll be starting off with the first Adutrix legion. I'm hopefully pronouncing that correctly. It's also known as the First Supporter Legion. Now, their emblem was a Pegasus, and they were formed in AD 68 to serve the Emperor Galba. The only notable commander was Publius Helvius Pertinax who became a future emperor. Now this is a legion with a surprising beginning. In the late spring of AD 68, at desperate bid to keep his throne, the 30-year-old Emperor Nero raised a new legion. Taking the unprecedented step of enlisting sailors from a Roman battle fleet based at Nicenum, which is on the east coast of Italy. But the sailors could not save him, or would not. With both the Praetorian Guard and his German Guard bodyguard deserting him, and with the Senate declaring him an enemy of the state and sending troops to arrest him, on the 9th of June, Nero apparently committed suicide. The Senate had already recognised the claim to the throne of 70-year-old Sulpicius Galba, the governor of a province of nearer Spain, and that autumn, Galba came marching to Rome from Spain, attended by an entourage, which included a new Seventh Legion he had raised there, and a large body of cavalry. In the meantime, the Nero's Legion of Seamen had sat stubbornly in Rome awaiting developments. With no quarters, they slept wherever they could around the city. At this time, Rome was crowded with the Legion detachments summoned to Rome by Nero during the last gasps of his reign. Those troops, including men from 11th Claudia and 15th Planaris legions, had resorted to sleeping in temples and public buildings. The seamen from Mycenae had not been presented with an eagle and standards to signify their legal their legion was officially constituted, but they were determined to gain recognition of their unit, with that recognition become a grant of Roman citizenship to each of them. At this time, seamen and marines serving in Rome's navy were not citizens, neither were they slaves. Contrary to the erroneous picture painted by the 19th century authors, Rome's sailors of this era were salaried free men who possessed neither Latin status nor Roman citizenship. Once the much valued prize of citizenship had been dangled before them by Nero, the seamen from Mycenae were determined to win it from the new emperor Galba. Consequently, the news reached Rome in October AD 68 that Galba and his column from Spain were approaching. The 5,000 sailors of the new legion went flooding out to the city gates, joining the thousands of civilians gathered there to greet him. Three miles north of Rome, this disorderly rabble 
semen, as Plutarch described them, those whom Nero had made soldiers, forming them into a legion, crowded around Galba, and loudly demanded to have their commission confirmed. Preventing the emperor from being seen or heard by the crowds, lining the route into the city, the ex-sailors tumultuously pressed him, shouting loudly to have colours for their legion and quarters assigned to them. Galba tried to put them off, saying he would consider the matter later, and rode on. But the seamen were not satisfied with this response, which they interpreted as a denial of their request. Grown more insolent and mutinous, and some with drawn swords in their hands, they continued to follow him, yelling their demands. The sight of the sailors' drawn swords frightened Galba, and as a column approached the Milvian Bridge over the Tiber River, he ordered the cavalry to ride over them. The seamen, the vast majority of whom were unarmed, were soon routed by the cavalry. But a man stood his ground, and many of them were killed, both there and in the pursuit, as they tried to flee back to the city. According to Tacitus, the affair resulted in the slaughter of thousands of unarmed soldiers of the unofficial legion by Galba's cavalry. Cassius Dio, writing of the event, more than 150 years later, estimated that about 7,000 perish, perished on the spot, and if the survivors were later decimated, with 1 in 10 executed. But 7,000 was certainly exaggerated figure. An imperial legion only numbered a little over 5,000 men, and there is no other record of the decimation. Word of Galba's cold-blooded act of brutality against his own men at the Melvian Bridge soon spread around the empire and did nothing to endear their new emperor to the Romans. The event was so impressed on the mind of Plutarch, who was at the time a young man and his twenties, and that a fellow historian Tacitus, then in his early teens, that both would observe that this was a bad omen for the new emperor's reign. That Galba should make his first entry to Rome through so much blood and among dead bodies. Despite this lethal treatment, the surviving seamen hardened their resolve to gain recognition. The legion, which Nero had levied from the fleet, still remained in the congested capital, albeit in custody and significantly reduced in numbers. The legion's tortured beginnings were now about to take another turn. Tacitus wrote that several months later, the city of Vienna had recently raised legions for Galba. This was not today's Vienna in Austria, but present-day Vienna in southern France. Roman Vienna was a leading city of a province of Narbon Gaul, through which Galba had passed on his march from Spain to Rome. Situated on the south bank of the Rhone, or the Rhine, Vienne, the capital of a powerful Alabroge tribe in Celtic times, had become one of the wealthiest cities in Gaul, even advertising its wealth in an inscription above the gates, Vienne Flor Felix, which declared that Vienna was rich and flourishing. 
such riches and such boasts could only attract the avarice attention of neighbours who coveted the gold of a man of Vienna. And so it was to prove. From AD 67 to AD 69, Vienna and the neighbouring city of Lugdunum, today's Lyon, were in a state of perpetual feud. A rivalry between the two went back as far as the first century BC, when Vienna had expelled Roman colonists who had been subsequently taken in by Lugdunum. When Gallic governor Vindus arose in revolt against Nero in AD 67, Lugdunum immediately threw its support behind Vindex, while Vienna retained its loyalty to Nero. During this period, Vienna had even sent armed men to raid Lugdunum to keep the peace following the Vindex revolt. Nero's Palatium stationed the new First Italica Legion in Lugdunum, supporting the 18th cohort of Rome's city guard, which was there to guard Lugdunum's imperial mint. In an ironic twist, Lugdunum had then sister support to Nero in Vienna to Galba. According to Tacitus, the people of Lugdunum now began to work on the passions of individual soldiers and to go them into destroying Vienna. Tacitus says that in trying to coerce the first Italica legionnaires into attacking Vienna, the people of Lugdunum claimed that while their city had begun as a colony of Roman legion veterans, the people of Vienna were foreigners. This potential threat of an attack by the first Italica legion appears to have spurred the people of Vienna to come up with a novel solution. Formation of a first of their legions for Galba, mentioned by Tacitus, levying young men locally. Vienna's first objective was the creation of a force to protect their city from attacks sponsored by Lugdunum. But the elders of Vienna would claim that they were merely creating legions in support of the nearby First Legion, the Italica, out of loyalty to their new emperor. Hence the name taken by this, the first of Vienna's new legions for Galba, was the first of the tricks of a first supporter legion. Literally, the legion in support of the first. Several months later, as Galba passed through the province on his way to Rome, the Viennese would have presented him with their new legion, a unit with perhaps a name, but without an eagle, standards or official standing and Gaba would have added Vienna's recruits to his own train as he marched on. On the 22nd of December, a patron apparently in a Saturnalia festival, acts of clemency connected with his birthday, which is just two days away. Galba released some of the imprisoned seamen who had been survived, who had survived, rather, a massacre in October outside the city discharging from military service those who considered too old or too unfit to be of further use to the state. The, dista the discharge diplomas issued to these men show that up to point they had not received Roman citizenship promised to them. Meanwhile, the remaining seamen from the Melvian Bridge Massacre continued to languish in prison. At the same time, Galba conveyed eagle and standards to the new legion, officially commissioning it into service as the first Hedrix legion. 
that the Legion was officially constituted by Galba, not Nero, is confirmed by Cassius Dio. The 22nd December timing of this formal presentation ceremony means that from that time forward, the Legion would display the astrological birth sign of Capricorn. Meanwhile, the remaining seamen of Nero's Legion enlistment were still imprisoned, so he was filling the Legion's ranks. It would seem that it the it would seem that it was the Viennese citizen recruits. Twenty-four days later, on the 15th of January, AD 69, Galba was assassinated in Rome by a disaffected soldier of the 15th Apollinaris Legion. The Praetorian Guard at once hailed as a new emperor Otho, the former governor of Lusitania, who had marched to Rome with Galba the previous autumn. The Senate endorsed their choice. Knowing how unpopular Galba had become with the military, one of Ofo's first acts was to win the loyalty of a fleet of Mycenaeum. Tacitus records how Ofo achieved this. Ofo, enrolled in the ranks of the Legion, survivors of a slaughter at the Melvian Bridge, who had been retrained in custody by the stern policy of Galba. That is, Ofo added to the already existing 1st Dietrich's Legion, the sailors he now released from custody. On being taken into the Legion and joining the Viennese recruits, these seamen would be granted the Roman citizenship for which they hungered. This diverse mix produced the 1st Dietrich soldiers, who were according to Plutarch, strong and bold. As for the rest of the sailors of a fleet at Mycenaeum, to them, Ofo held it hopes of a more honourable service in future. They too might aspire to citizenship eventually. With the unit's official commissioning by Galba, the name of the first of the Trix Legion was formalised, as was its emblem, Pegasus the Flying Horse. In mythology, Pegasus was the son of Neptune, god of the sea, which would seemingly make the flying horse an appropriate symbol for a legion whose first recruits had come from the navy. Yet, as Star points out, the seamen of Rome's battle fleets showed no inclination to worship Neptune, neither did they worship Castor and Pollux, the patron deities of merchant sailors. In fact, the men of a fleet to Mycenaeum venerated Isis, the patron goddess of sailors in Hellenistic times. He was believed to control the weather. <laughs>